the Yeah, there are different words. Oh, I'm excited. Back up, Bear. Gotta bring some variety. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Chatty girls. Y'all ready to get some new friends? Here come the new girls. Our friends are here from Hi. Oklahoma, just drove down here. It's John and Angela from them. Their channel is Heirloom Permaculture. And they just brought us 10 chickens, 10, 10 chickens, uh, black ostrilorps, barred rocks, and one, what was Columbian it? Wyandotte. Colombian Wyandotte. Yeah. So we're really excited. Now we're at the max of what we wanted. Uh, several of you mentioned, because Jeremiah had said he wanted 35 chickens and then we went and got 20 from the Vincents and they were like, oh, did you win the argument? No, I did not. So <laughs> now I have 35 chickens. Uh, <laughs> what is that? 35 chickens. Will you tell my viewers really quick what you guys do on your channel? You're kind of doing a suburban gardening thing. Like I said, we're heirloom permaculture. Uh, we're in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. So kind of 6B, 7A area. So what we're doing is we're on one acre uh, and we raise, we have a large garden, kind of a food forest type garden. Uh, and then we also have a community garden in our front yard. We have, as I said, 35 layers now. We were up to about 60. <laughs> we, we had that many chickens because we needed them. Uh, we don't till our garden, even mm -hmm. though it's in ground. So we use the chickens to help build, build soil. So we needed a lot at one time. We don't have that need anymore. So we're downsizing to fit the system where it's at in its life. So we're trying to raise almost all of our own food. Uh, we do pastured poultry. Uh, there's a lot of things we do on, we're showing on one acre. What so. all you can do on an acre, really? How much? Yeah. I mean, how much you can really do in a small amount of space? Yeah, we figured if we can show that we could support all the food needs for a family of five, which we're not there yet, and we're we're trying to get there, and we're trying to do it without trying to do it all at once, so we don't mess things up, but uh, do everything we can. If we can accomplish that, then we can show people that even if you can't do as much or, or support your, your family's entire needs, that you can do something. You can make a change in the in your own food supply for your house. So I love uh, that. Just trying to trying to do our best at it and and provide a good example. So. Yeah. Now they have a really great video out about how to build a greenhouse with the with cattle panels, which is really really cool. And uh, we had actually talked about building one when we were because I didn't know if we were going to get to do the window greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And I'd watch Shell's video and it's really good. So I'll put a link to their channel down below into that video. So make sure you go check them out and give them some support. Super sweet family. They have three really awesome daughters. Uh, the youngest of which. <laughs> we just tell her, we just want her to just talk. We're like, just talk. Tell me a story. She's so awesome. <laughs> Get your black panther mask and your claw. Benjamin and I are headed next door to say hi to the alpacas. Hey, nosy girls. Hey, nosy You better quit, bear. They're gonna hey, get you. What did hey. you? What'd you call them? Hey, angel girls. Hey, angel girls. Oh, hey, angel girls. Okay, hey, Tori. Hey, sweet babies. What'd you say? I can handle this. You can handle this? Okay. Hey, Tori. Hey, girly. Oh, sweet girl. Can you give me a kiss on the head? Yeah. Is that Whisper? Hey, Tori girl. Can you kiss? I'm a kiss. Oh, Mommy. thank you, love. Thank you, darling. Is that Whisper or Shadow? That's Shadow. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. Maybe she's she's full on black. She's full on black. Well, she's got some brown on her legs. Yep, that's Tori. Hey, girl. Doesn't Tori have the prettiest eyes? Her eyes have blue in them. And they have big eyes. They do have very big eyes. So, what is what is your favorite part about alpacas? Their fur. Their fur? Yeah, yeah their hair. Yeah, and you make them their fur out of blankets, they will, they will grow new fur. <laughs> right? Yeah. Pretty much. They grow new fiber and we'll shear their fiber every year and we can make blankets out of it. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want to 
shadow for because it's so dark. You want to know what's really cool about like Peekaboo's hair yeah. and Boomer and Contender? Oh, Daddy's got the food. Their hair is white, and so we get to dye it. We get to color it. Won't that be neat? Let's go help feed them. Okay, that means I'm gonna pick up uh, the one of the white ones. One of the white ones. Come on, come turn the hose on. Let's give them some water. <laughs> Mommy, I really want to run out into the bushes. You want to run out into the bushes? Okay, so Jeremiah does the feeding, and as soon as he walks up yeah, in the Daddy, evenings, they just the bolt. With He's saying, the "Can you run out yeah. to the bushes with him?" What bushes? The bushes. You want to go over to the bushes? Yeah, with him. Why? Because. Because you think it'd be fun? Yeah. Like a bush adventure? Yeah. Like a jungle? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Let's go. Hey ladies. Yeah, I started uh, closing them out to distribute the food Yeah. because Tori kept spitting on me. She was spitting on you? Not on me on purpose because she was I was just trying to be territorial. And she would go up to the first one I'd scoop and then they'd come up and then she'd spit and I'd get hit. So I'd go to the next one and I'd scoop and then she'd go to that and then she'd spit. I was really <laughs> getting spit on and spit on and spit on. And I was like, nope, not again. That's why when I walked in and they all ran up, I was like, oh crap. <laughs> Yeah, Tori. I know you give kisses, but you also is stanky. <laughs> Look at her. She looks so innocent. <laughs> She's like me. <laughs> She's so beautiful. Look at her pretty eyes. She has blue eyes. Yeah, she does have blue eyes, and she's the most beautiful. I have Tori first. I'm gonna have three blankets in a row. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want? So you want a blanket out of whisper or no, out of uh, shadows hair? out of one of the white ones hair, any of the white ones, and Tori. Yeah. So now you're planning out three alpaca blankets. Yeah. Who's the most beautiful alpaca? Tori. Tori is. What do you like best about Tori? Hey Tori girl, can I kiss? Because she gives kisses. Because she gives kisses? Yeah. They were out here, it started drizzling and I guess they decided to hang out in it because some of them have a little bit of a wet bouffant. Like you, sweetheart, did you stand out in the rain? Isn't, I think sweetheart may be one of the prettiest ones. I love that rose gray. You love sweetheart? Wait, I have four. I have <laughs> four four blankets. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Come on, go around. That is a boy who's experienced. Let's go what? Around to the bush. <laughs> Hey, in Australia, in Australia, it's another country, they call that a walkabout. <laughs> you ready to go on a walkabout? Yeah. <laughs> I love his little victorious laugh at the idea of having three alpaca, or four, four alpaca blankets. Four alpaca blankets. <laughs> All right, girls. Oh, sweetheart, waste no time. I just fed the quail. Hey, babe, we need to grab some more hay, too. Fall down, you can't cry in the bush, because something might get you. All right? You tough? Yeah. Alright, let's go. The bush is on me over there. We gotta water the quail, remember? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so the stuff that farm kids dream about, having four alpaca fiber blankets. That's pretty fantastic. I don't know what we're gonna do with all the fiber from our alpacas. We have not gotten that far yet in deciding that. Of course, we'll shear them all next spring. And I have previously not spun. I do know how to crochet. As you can imagine, I don't have just a lot of spare time, so I don't spend a lot of time uh, making any sort of fiber art. And so what we may end up doing is doing some trading and seeing if we can find anyone that would be interested in spinning for us in trade for like some fiber to keep i have no idea i don't know that industry i don't know that market i'm actually i'm planning on spinning some so i'll keep some of it but i got to see firsthand when we went to ohio to pick up our alpacas uh from miss sherry and miss suzanne i saw the fiber that they had just harvested from these they had just sheared about a month before I had just trash bags and trash bags full of fiber so I'm sure we're gonna be completely covered up with more than we need even though I would like to spin uh, I cannot imagine having enough time in my busy life to spend 
uh, multiple trash bags full of fiber. I mean, even one trash bag full of fiber would be way too much for me. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We have a lot of other things to figure out the logistics of before I have to figure out what to do with 12 alpacas worth of alpaca fiber. Oh, Daddy and Ben made it over to the bushes. Are you on your walkabout? Oh, the bush, excuse me. Are you on your walkabout? Hey, mommy's asking a question. Are you on your walkabout? Yeah, but Hey, you don't have any oils on. Don't get ticks. Nope, all right, let's go out. Start. <laughs> Jeremiah wants to show y'all his major score. So his brother does construction and did a job. You gotta be really careful in the bush. Let mommy talk. His brother did a job and is doing a job and basically ended up with a ton of scrap tin and all Jeremiah had to do was haul it in order to get it. This is two thirds of the small side. Oh wow. There's another third. So we have no idea what we're gonna do with all of this. I think we're gonna side some of our buildings. Like Maya's gonna be doing some repairs to our goat barn and also with the boy alpaca barn that he's building. And uh, so now we have all of this used tin and that's pretty awesome. But this is more tin than we're gonna need. Uh, and there's more, there's a lot more. Yeah, this was the short side and we still yeah. have to take off. He still has to take off and replace the long side. Yeah, so there is a lot, a lot of tin. That's the thing, if you wanna have reclaimed materials, you get them whenever you can and then you figure out what you're gonna do with them later. <laughs> I'm actually gonna go ahead and scoop up some of this alpaca poo and take it down to the garden. Not after a while. You have to make it. You have to compost it. Hey, what's up, Toby? What's up? What are you doing? Do you know a uh, sweetheart did this to me? Winked at me. She winked at you. I know. That's mm -hmm. cool. So I guess how packers know how to wink. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Hey, look at. Must be. Peekaboo is that. Mm -mm. <laughs> They're so cute, huh? They're funny. All right, guys, let's carry this poop down to the garden. Say bye, ladies. That's good for soil, Mom. Yes, a pack of poop is very good for soil. Come on. What'd you get, Ben? What do you have? Toad. Let me see him. <gasps> Toady. That's not Toady. Toady's bigger. That's not Toady? I'm gonna, I'm How do you know? Boomer. Because Toady's <laughs> not that big. What are you naming him? Boomer. Boomer? Yeah. So is he named after the alpaca? For years, anytime the kids catch like a larger toad, they've been like, Toady, you came back. I mean, for like almost the entirety of how long we've lived here, there's been Toady, which is any toad that the kids catch. But obviously, not small toads. Because obviously, that's not Toady. It's not big enough. Look at that evening sky. My cotton candy. Huh? You want to keep Boomer the toad? And what are you going to give him? Uh, a little toilet? A little toilet? I don't think he needs a little toilet, honey. I think he wants to go home to his... I think he wants to go home to his little toad mommy and toad daddy. Wait. What if a big giant caught you and wouldn't let you come home to us? Wouldn't you be so sad? Yeah. Yeah, you better let him go so he can go home to his family. Put him in the garden. Put him in the garden. He'll eat the bad bugs, okay? Run, run, run. Run, run, run. This may be one of my favorite times of the day in the garden. Just 10 or 15 minutes before the dark. It sounds like night outside. Oh, my tomato plants are getting so sick. But they're covered with fruit. Look at that. There's just something about it. It's really special. I like to come out at this time and just sit in the pavilion until it gets good and dark. Watch the fireflies come out. 
the light is fading very quickly. We're going to spread out some of this alpaca manure at the base of some of the more heavy feeding plants, things like cucumbers and melons. I actually already filmed my farewell because it's almost dark out here. Um, and then I started walking around and I knew I had a lot of tomatoes to uh, pick. And like, I've had so many in the house to deal with that I put off doing it today because I didn't want just to have a ton of tomatoes on the counter. I thought, well, I'll just give them an extra day. Um, well, some of them had started splitting because we had a rain shower this evening. But I just found some massive tomatoes that I did not realize were growing. And although my record this year is 23 ounces, I'm pretty sure one of these guys is going to blow that out of the water. Let's go in and make Okay, so I'm going to go from what I think is the smallest to largest. Some of these were split, but they appear to have just done this. So I'm going to cut them up and put them in the freezer like right now after I weigh them. So one pound, 1.3 ounces. That was one of the smaller ones. Um, this was one of the other smaller ones. One pound, 3.8 ounces. Let's see. One pound, 5.4 ounces. One pound, 5.1 ounce, 5 ounces. All right, now, the moment of truth. Look at this monster tomato. That's big. This had just gone completely unnoticed. That's big. One man. pound, 14 ounces which is 28.7 ounces. A monster. That is a monster. And that, my friends, is the largest tomato out of the garden this year. So all of these crazy, massive tomatoes were actually from climbing triple crop plants. So, uh, yeah. In case there was any curiosity of whether you should be growing this tomato plant, this is your answer. These are from different plants in the garden, but uh, golly, those are some big tomatoes. And the really big one is actually is underripe, as you can see, but being so fused and faciated, I went ahead and picked it because I felt like it was very likely going to split and I wanted to go ahead and bring it in. But these are more like what they're supposed to look like. Obviously, this is a really ripe one since it did split. Okay. Now for real this time, I bless you <laughs> until next time.